Hi guys, my name is Tom and I'm the Tech Chap and I wanted to find out whether you really do need a fancy high-end nice camera like a DSLR to film videos for like YouTube, for vlogging, for, for making films. Because I actually use a Canon 70D to film this, um, to film all of my videos, but I wanted to know whether you actually really need something that's so expensive. Would a compact camera, would even your smartphone uh, do the job just as well. So in this video I'll be testing three very different types of camera. The Canon 70D DSLR versus the uh, Panasonic Lumix TZ40 or ZS30 if you're in the States and also just a normal smartphone like the Samsung Galaxy S6. I'll be testing the video quality, audio quality with their built-in mics and also the uh, pros and cons of each, you know, for price, attachments, portability, uh, etc. So uh, I think it'll be pretty interesting to see mainly the video difference because a lot of people who like to start, uh, who want to start be, uh, a YouTube career, who want to start vlogging, who want to start making uh, films, whatever they're for, you know, you don't really know uh, out of the gate if you're new to it what you need. People always think you need the most expensive red epic cameras to uh, produce uh, good content for uh, YouTube or for whatever it is. But I want to find out really, you know, do you need that? Do you need to spend a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars plus on a fancy high-end camera or with the smartphone in your pocket? do just as well. So let's find out and let's look at the video quality. So throughout this video I'm going to swap through the different cameras uh, starting with the uh, Canon and then going to the uh, Lumix from uh, Panasonic, the TZ40 and then moving on to the Samsung Galaxy S6. So I'll be sort of jumping between them uh, throughout so uh, please ignore my eyes as I uh, dart between the different uh, cameras. But basically obviously every camera uh, is a bit different. It's got different megapixels, different sensor sizes, different apertures. Uh, and uh, you, you can, we can get very technical about it uh, or we could, as you're doing now, just look at the difference in video quality. And I think at the end of the day, um, obviously there's a lot more to consider if you really get into it, but just you know the video quality, what it looks like, uh, the colors, the, the uh, vibrancy, the accuracy, the uh, sh quality, the sharpness, uh, things like that, all things you can just see straight away. You don't have to worry about what the aperture size is or the uh, megapixel count. But as well as the technical side of things, you do have certain things to consider. You have, uh, for example, uh, the higher megapixels means if you're wanting to uh, create a, uh, a large image, like for print, for, uh, for media, for adverts, for, uh, for science, for example, you're going to want a higher megapixel camera because then you can uh, blow it up much larger and uh, you won't lose as much quality. But for more everyday uses, you also have to consider the resolution. The uh, Canon 70D DSLR I'm filming with, and I almost always film with, is at 1080p, which is full HD. But interestingly, uh, although the TZ40 also does only up to 1080p, uh, my Galaxy S6 can film all the way up to 4K. So uh, interestingly, my smartphone uh, actually can do the highest resolution. Now 4K is a little bit advanced still for most people. Most people don't have a 4K TV, 4K monitor, or even of course a 4K screen. So for the majority of people, 4K isn't really that useful. It's still a bit of an early thing, especially for, since most smartphones that do film in 4K are limited to five minutes. It often heats up the phone quite a lot and also uh, it takes up a lot more space and storage is a big consideration. But as well as resolution, where usually, unless you're going really high end, the smartphones can win, uh, you also got to consider frame rate and in, uh, in DSLRs, most common, you get 24 or 30 frames per second, which uh, is pretty standard. On uh, compact cameras, you're more likely to get 50 or 60 frames per second. And on uh, smartphones like the Galaxy S6 and uh, the new iPhones, you can have up to 60 frames per second as well. Now, depending on whether you prefer the higher frame rate, which gives a slightly more soap-like effect, like a soap opera, uh, is up to you, they have their merits. But uh, for more traditional, more professional uses, 24, 30 frames per second, is a bit more standard, so you may be able to get a higher res, higher frame rate on these smaller, more compact devices, but that may not always translate to what you necessarily need or want, especially if you've embraced 4K and you're not a big fan of the higher frame rate, 60 frames per second. So we've been looking at the video quality for a little bit now, we've been jumping between them, and uh, I think you've got a good impression of which you like, which you prefer. Obviously, the, uh, they look slightly different, they are slightly next to each other, so um, you're not going to get an exact uh, identical picture and also they do have slightly uh, different uh, sensor sizes and uh, some are more wide angle than others so you're going to get more and less in the picture but uh, that's just going to be different for pretty much every device you use. So now let's have a look at the audio quality. So far uh, I've been uh, talking to you and it's being recorded on this Rode uh, Shogun mic which is uh, as I get closer the quality gets even better, even better. Uh, gets um, It's being fed into the Canon 
DSLR, so that's how, where the mic, uh, that's where the sound is coming from. But uh, as I'll take that out now, and we'll just use the built-in microphones for each device. So I've unplugged the external microphone, and now we're just going to test the built-in mics on each device. We're going to start with the Canon 70D, which we're listening to now. I've got a little annotation at the top to let you know which one is being used. I'm going to read a quick passage from uh, the book that was nearest to me, a Bill Bryson book, and then you can judge which sounds better. So this is just their built-in mics, no external uh, shotgun mic or anything like that. So let's uh, find out which sounds better. So starting with the Canon, um, I've never had such good or friendly service anywhere or felt more like a worm. He brought my food promptly, chattering away about the weather and what a glorious day it promised to be. I couldn't understand why you were so forgiving. Only gradually did it occur to me what a strange sight I must have pre presented. A middle-aged man with a rucksack, visiting a place like Weston, out of season for no evident reason, fetching up at their hotel and bellowing and stomping about over a trifling inconvenience. He must have thought I was mad, an escaped lunatic perhaps, and that was the safest way to approach me. Either that or... It was just an extremely nice person. In other way, I salute him now. So I'm actually using a Rode external shotgun mic here, which I think is pretty good. It's about £100, $130, and uh, it's a good way of getting a much better audio uh, quality from for your videos. Now, with this, this comparison is testing a high-end DSLR, medium compact camera, and a smartphone that we all have uh, in terms of video quality and audio quality. But I think, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, regardless of sort of just the quality, the sort of the sharpness, the clarity, the colours uh, of the uh, video, it's quite important to get good sound. In fact, it's very important to get so good sound. If you sound like you're in a bunker or you're in a, an echoey room, it's not going to sound nice. People aren't going to enjoy listening to your videos. So, regardless of what you do go for, whether you are convinced that a basic smartphone is all you need, whether you think a compact camera is worthy upgrade, or whether you're going to shell out for a full, full high-end DSLR because you think you can see the benefits, it is definitely worth getting in any situation an external mic whether it's a lavalier lapel mic whether it's a, a shotgun mic or um, whatever it may be it's definitely worth investing in an external microphone because you get significantly better audio quality and uh, that will really complement your videos and people will notice it so I think you guys can see for yourself which you prefer in terms of video and audio quality but let's take a second to talk about the prices of these different devices the Canon 70D costs around 800 pounds uh, with the uh, lens I'm using which is an 18 to 135 millimeter lens a pretty standard lens uh, so that's really expensive and nearly a thousand pounds so we're talking sort of maybe $1,200 uh, these prices will vary, of course. Now, the TZ40 or ZS30 from Panasonic in America is uh, about £200. Maybe you can get a little bit cheaper now for maybe 160 ish uh, So a good deal cheaper, perhaps maybe a quarter of the price of the DSLR, but it also does uh, offer quite a lot of the features you get uh, on both sides uh, of the, from the DSLR and also the smartphone side of things. Whereas the Galaxy S6 is about £450, has a fair few more options to it in terms of resolution and frame rate, but many of us already have quite a nice smartphone, so we may as well just make use of the decent camera that's in it. Of course, there's lots of other things to consider from attachments to different lenses, and of course, zoom is a big deal, and it's something that lacks in smartphones. You don't get a optical zoom, you only get the pretty crappy digital zoom in smartphones. So if you're going to zoom in on a subject, if you're looking at uh, long distance shots, uh, you're going to want to invest in a higher end compact or DSLR for that reason alone. So this has been a video and audio comparison between a smartphone, a compact camera and a DSLR. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it and you can uh, see uh, the differences and you've learned something from this. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments and whether you think it's going to be worth putting uh, a bunch of money into a high-end camera uh, for your project. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you again on the Tech Channel.